Okay, and these are just three examples of how to uh, do that. However, if you look at the three examples, all of these, the approach is this, is 2D, which is exercising the 2D side of your brain. So you're training your eye to see and your hand to draw. This is training your eye to see, your hand to follow. Same this one, you're training your eye to see a grid, some kind of 2D pattern, and you're re repeating that 2D pattern within your canvas. Therefore, you could actually draw this object very well if the better artist you are. However, it's 2D. So as a designer, however, we don't have this in front of us, right? We don't, this is not here. We have to, some director's gonna be saying, hey, I need to create a whole new planet and it has to have this kind of life form. There's no oxygen on this planet. And how does everything look? You have nothing in front of you. So how do you create something by thinking 2D when you have nothing in front of you to draw from? You have to be able to think in 3D. So for industrial designer, here comes industrial designer, okay? Again, this has nothing to do uh, with, against art or anything like that. I'm just. Uh, purely explained the difference why when we draw an ant or when we draw a plane, why does it look so uh, clinical in a way, very producty? It's because we're trying to teach students not because it's an airplane or is it a bug or is it anything else. Purely, we're trying to teach them what the 3D objects, what kind of forms are making these objects. Okay, so for industrial designer, what do we do? We draw. Okay, it's a cylinder. A cylinder sits inside. Well, first of all, the most important, where's the horizon line? In this shot, horizon line's here. So I'm gonna lock down the horizon line. Therefore, I have some kind of perspective to allow me to have a vanishing point and a cylinder, which is this chair, could sit inside a rectangle and then I could plot those out, you see? And I could plot out how thick this is. I could look at this dimension here. I could say like, hey, the height of this chair looks to be about double of the diameter of this. So therefore, whatever this is, is double. So I could measure this using perspective. I could then reduce it down to here, right? The floor is wider. So I could go out from my little box here, make a wider footprint. From here, I could do the height, right? Same kind of calculate. And then I insert my cylinders in. So I insert my first cylinder. And then, the, sorry, it's drawing so rough. Hopefully you guys can see the point here. And then we have the base. The base comes out from four corners, hit the four corners. Here's the bigger floor pattern. From there, I could then connect my legs, all right? And then we have the, the bottle, which is also a cylinder, which we could use a cylinder to calculate, right? And then the background, how far is that from the wall? So maybe the, uh, you've got, this is the wall here. So that distance to that distance, give us the perspective for the backdrop All right, this backdrop will actually be in perspective as well. And then the carpet that it's sitting on will be in perspective. Now, what's the difference here? Well, the difference between this drawing and these is that this takes a lot of 3D thinking. Because once you have this, watch what I could do with this kind of thing. I don't no longer need this in front of me. You could just take this away because that's the whole point. So now I could go, hey, I remember this thing has a um, rectangle that looks like this. And it's about... This length times two is the height, right? And then it has a footprint about this big. It has a height of this big. Okay, so now I could then draw my cylinders in. I could connect it. On each four corners is a leg. Here's the bigger one. Draw the X to find the center. Here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. So that goes to that. This leg goes to this. This leg goes to that. This leg goes to this. I have a bottle on the top, which I'm gonna draw it as if it's see-through. Let me erase this for a second. There's a bottle here. There's a uh, apple sitting here. All right, it's distance from the wall. And there is a backdrop. You see what I did here? I drew this entire thing upside down. But drawing it upside down in a right way. You know what I'm saying? Without flipping my canvas. So this thing is like an ant uh, seeing through the ground. Right? You can see this table is floating. This is the power of thinking in 3D. That once I know the proportion of this, I could then turn the same object and draw any angle I want without ever relying on this ever again. Right? Because it's teaching words. These methods it's very good for art. It's very good to practice because any drawing is good. 
Okay, don't get me wrong. Drawing anything is good practice. The more you draw, the better you get. However, this method of thinking must be applied together with this 3D thinking to get a good result for designers, for uh, especially what we do in entertainment, which is designing a lot of things that exist in 3D space. Right? I'm not talking about you know, other forms of design like interior and all that kind of stuff, which is similar, but we're doing concept stuff here. Okay, <coughs> so hopefully that makes sense a little bit. Um, you know, taking that note, for example, right now I have nothing in front of me. I could draw that that chair from any angle and that's the power of it so once you practice for example a bug or a in you know an airplane i know its proportions i know what makes it work i know what kind of shapes make it up so when i design i could then start rearranging a an ant and an airplane and whatever else i like to do and start making up new designs and that's exactly what we do and the new design we make up could exist in 3d space so here I'm drawing a very rough version of that bench or the table in a complete, right here's point, boom, boom, right, find center, find center, right, boom. It's rough, but you can hopefully sort of see what I'm doing here. This is the base for the legs, the base for the legs come out, and they come out at an angle, right, because the base is bigger. Right, so you can see here, this is this chair lying on the floor. I can even plot a shadow on it if I want. Because I know where everything goes. It's in 3D. Right, so this shadow will come down here. I have a shadow here, shadow here, right? And I can still put the bottle on top if it's glued to the thing, it doesn't fall off. The bottle will be over here. The apple will be here, right? If the uh, distance from the wall is this far, that will be the wall. And then we go up to about this far. That would be the backdrop, which goes up in perspective. All right, you can see here. And then if there is a carpet that's sitting on, the carpet will be here. Go into perspective. Go into perspective. And then the carpet has some folds and stuff like that, right? So right now we're seeing through as if we're in the Maya or 3D Max and we're viewing a wireframe. Okay, and that's what this scene looks like, you see? Any angle. And this is what we try to teach our students here, especially right before you get to design school. You have to sort of understand this process uh, because what we're asking you to do on the job eventually is to develop objects that exist in a 3D space that you must possess the skill in your head to spin objects basically virtually in your head in 3D. Okay, So that's that. So that's what these airplane things were about. Um, drawing these objects using the thing I just showed you guys. Okay, and the actual process, that's something that takes a long time. Okay, but for now, practice it. At least try to draw and think that way. Uh, don't worry if it looks good or not, just draw a lot of different things. So we showed you the bugs, right? We showed you this. So hopefully then now that these drawings start to make sense of why we draw this way. We keep it geometric because we want to know what forms are making up these shapes. Eventually, this is actually stuff we um, show our students. Uh, these are homework related things. So you can see here, here's a spaceship, very geometric, very simple one, but draw in front view and the same exact shape, draw the back view, back three quarter and front three quarter. Uh, this is a very hard thing to do if you don't think in 3D, uh, which maybe some of you uh, know what I'm talking about. If you draw something in front view or kind of this view here, right? And then someone asks you, can, can you draw it in reverse? That causes a lot of problem to to uh, designers or artists who, or junior students who don't think in 3D because all of a sudden their brain is saying, hey, I'm not used to seeing this in this angle. So therefore, I don't know how to draw it from this view because I'm seeing it as a 2D shape. But as soon as you think in 3D, it doesn't matter anymore. You could draw in any angle because to us, a person, an environment, a vehicle, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, they're just 3D objects. There is no such thing as I'm going to break this into this category or break this into that category. They're just 3D. Okay. So let me pause Camtasia for a second so it doesn't crash and we'll come right back. Hold on a second.